Now, we talked earlier about the teams that were potentially in the playoff race. If they lost, would that impact them come trade deadline? The Commanders were one of those teams. We've got Chase Young and Montez Sweat. We've been talking about them a bunch, potential trade targets for other teams. You can't sign all these guys when you've got all these defensive linemen that you signed uh, or excuse me, you drafted in the first round. They're uh, they're up for big money, so potentially you get something in exchange for them. What do we think about Sweat, uh, who you guys reported, uh, and we've all reported, uh, is possibly on the block, and, and they have an offer, Ian? You got Sweat, you got Chase Young, you got some other. So those are kind of the young pieces that if a team was going to trade for them, they would trade for them, use them as a building block of the future, either get a contract extension done now or in the future, kind of like the Ravens with Roquan Smith last year. Those are like the big pieces. I know that the commanders are getting calls. I know there is interest. I do not know right now if there will definitely be a trade, but at least there is enough there where a trade is possible. And there's some other veteran pieces. Kendall Fuller is one. Uh, Antonio Gibson is another. You know, the teams have been kind of fishing around and calling, saying, hey, if you're really selling, we might take on these guys. It's kind of like a complimentary piece. But, you know, to me, it's the edge rushers. It's Chase Young, it's Montez Sweat, and you're right. They're both in a contract year. Signing both is unlikely, so it does make sense if you get a premium pick to do a deal now, and for a team acquiring them, it's like you get ahead of free agency. There's a bunch of edge rushers that are available here. We've talked, too, about Daniil Hunter, but that's going to take a really high pick in order to get Daniil Hunter, the NFL sack leader going into Week 8 at least, onto your roster here. With regard to Kyler Murray, too, really quick, A-team trading for him. You're basically taking on two-year salary. You're committing all the way through 2025. Packers have Jordan Love. They didn't have a one-year extension with him before the season. They're trying to get out of a rut. This is not going to help. Josh Metellus with the interception on the deep ball right there. Look at him sneaking that hand in there. All right, let's fast forward now to next play, actually. Vikings first and 10. Kirk Cousins, Jordan Addison. What a rookie season he has had so coming good. on, especially since Justin Jefferson was out. Vikings now up 24-3, to fourth quarter. This is the fast forward. Kirk Cousins dropping back. On okay. first glance, okay, he's sacked. Looks maybe like he slips on the turf, but you look at that second angle. You can see the calf go. That is a believed to be a torn Achilles ending Kirk Cousins' season. An MRI this morning, full expectation. That will confirm the diagnosis. So a Vikings team that is on a three-game winning streak potentially could be without, or will in all likelihood, be without their starting quarterback and have to figure things out. Which brings us to, if you're on that type of winning streak, Ian, and you've got guys like Daniil Hunter who potentially could be available, some of these teams that are hanging in the balance here, what direction should you go? This is one of those challenging things that GMs have to sort out going into Week 9 here. If I had to guess, if I had to read all the tea leaves and guess, I feel it feels to me like making a move, trading Daniil Hunter probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Right? I mean, I think to me, that's kind of where it stands right now. A team could come in and say, hey, we'll give you a second rounder, in which case it suddenly makes a lot more sense. There's two issues here. One, yes, the Vikings are going to have another starting quarterback or maybe two more starting quarterbacks we'll see this year. But as a team, they're good and they are very well coached. So theoretically, they could get someone in there, keep them upright and be okay. The other problem is, Daniel Hunter is playing great. And if you're him and you're going into a uh, free agency next year, Staying and continuing to play awesome in a system you like actually makes sense. So to me, like, I'm not so sure I see a trade on the horizon. Anything's possible, but to me, that's where it stands now. This is such a tough spot. Like, I don't envy Kwesi Adolfo Mensa, and I don't envy uh, Kevin O'Connell on this one because you can make the playoffs, right? Like, you're playing good enough. You've got a roster. You can figure out the quarterback situation. You can change the way you approach things. You're going to get Justin Jefferson back at some point. You could make the playoffs. Could you win yeah. the Super Bowl without Kirk Cousins? Probably not, right? So you you got to look at your fan base and say, are we going to sell off and, and trust us? This is going to be the, the best thing for the long haul. But you know how fans are. They see what's right in front of them. Or do you kind of say, look, we got to – obligation here because it's not going to be hard to make the playoffs in the NFC especially when we're already in a playoff spot so we're playing from ahead on this one and we've got winnable games on our schedule it's just like I probably would stick it out you know because this is not like baseball where you really got to restock the farm system there's ways to kind of make that happen without making trades at the trade deadline but your Super Bowl hopes or, or any long-term playoff hopes rode off on that cart yesterday I believe